Let us consider a face centered cubic lattice. The conventional unit cell of this lattice is shown here. It is a cube with lattice points at the corners and at the centers of all faces. But note that when we say FCC lattice, we mean the points generated by the repetition of this unit cell and not the unit cell itself. A given lattice can be generated by infinitely many different unit cells. The conventional unit cell used for FCC lattice shown here is a non-primitive one because it has lattice points other than those at the corners, the face centering ones. In a primitive unit cell, lattice points will be there only at the corners. For some purposes, for example, to determine the reciprocal lattice, it is useful to describe the lattice with a primitive unit cell. In this video, we describe a primitive unit, one of the primitive unit cells of the FCC lattice. For this, let us construct a vector from this origin to the back face center shown here as the vector a1. Similarly, we take vector a2 and vector a3 from the same origin to the centers of other faces meeting at that origin. So we have selected one of the corners of the cube edge origin and three faces meet at that corner. So we have taken vectors to the centers of all those three faces. These three vectors, a1, a2, a3, span a primitive unit cell of the FCC lattice. Let me show, let me generate that entire primitive unit cell using these three vectors. If we add a1 and a2, we arrive at the top face center. Similarly, if we add a2 and a3, we arrive at the front face center and if we add a1 and a3, we arrive at the right face center. We now have seven corners of the primitive unit cell. One, the original corner of the cube and six face centers. However, we know that a parallelopiped unit cell requires eight corners. So the eighth corner in this case is the diametrically opposite corner from the initial origin. So this point. So if we join that point now, we thus have a primitive unit cell as it has lattice points only at its corners. Let us now describe the primitive vectors a1, a2 and a3 in terms of the three orthogonal unit vectors e1, e2 and e3 shown in green here. These three unit vectors are along the edges of the original conventional unit cell. So if we want to express a1 in terms of these vectors, we can see that a1 is lying on the face defined by e2 and e3. So we get we go to a by 2 distance where a is the edge length of the cube. We go to a by 2 distance along e2 and then again a by 2 distance along e3 to reach a1. So a1 can be expressed as a by 2 e2 plus a by 2 e3. Taking a by 2 common, this can be expressed as a by 2 e2 plus e3. Similarly, a2 can be expressed as a, a by 2 e1 plus e3 and a3 can be expressed as a by 2 e1 plus e2. These three primitive basis vectors are all of equal length, a length equal to half the face diagonal of the original cube. So thus we can write that the lengths of these three vectors are all equal to half the face diagonal which is 
a by root 2 by where a is the edge length of the conventional cube. Similarly, if we try to find the angles between a1 and a2 and a2 and a3 and a3 and a1, these three angles, alpha, beta and gamma, all are equal, can be shown equal to 60 degrees. This can be easily found by taking the dot products of these vectors. It is now of interest to find the volume of the primitive unit cell generated by these basis vectors. So these are our primitive vectors a1, a2 and a3 and we know that the volume of a parallelopiped generated by three vectors is given by the scalar triple product a1 dot a2 cross a3. So the volume of the primitive unit cell vp is a1 dot a2 cross a3. One way to find this cross product is to find the value of this determinant which has as its rows the components of the basis vector. So the first row is the component of the first basis vector a1, the second row the components of the second basis vector and the third row the components of third basis vector a3. If we find this determinant we find this value to be just a cube by 4. And if we realize that a cube is actually the volume of the original conventional unit cell, then we can write this as the volume of the conventional unit cell divided by 4. So the primitive unit cell volume is just one fourth the volume of the original cube. This fact can be realized also directly by looking at the number of lattice points belonging to the conventional and to the primitive unit cells. The effective number of lattice points in the conventional unit cell can be calculated. This value nc can be calculated as 8 times 1 by 8 from the corners. Each corner is, there are 8 corners in the cube and each corner is shared by 7 other cubes. So 8 cubes share each corner. So effectively the corner, any given corner, only 1 eighth of that corner point belongs to a given lattice, to a given unit cell. So 8 times 1 by 8 coming from corner and there are 6 face centering lattice point but each face is shared by 2 cubes. So we have a factor half here for counting the effective number. So this gives us 4 lattice points per unit cell of the conventional unit cell. Now the effective number of lattice points in the primitive unit cell, since now this unit cell has points only at the corners, we simply get 8 into 1 by 8 which is 1. Now the ratio of volumes of two unit cell for any given lattice, this is a general result. That ratio of two volume of volumes of two unit cells are simply the ratio of number of lattice points in those unit cells. So Vc by Vp, the conventional by primitive, will be Nc by Np. And we, we are seeing that Nc by Np in this case is 4. So we get the same relation that the primitive unit cell is one fourth the volume of the conventional unit cell. Thank you.